Today we're talking to a guy that realized that his current job was not going to fulfill what he ultimately wanted to do for his life long term. In the six years, I haven't really moved the needle that much. And so if I look another six years down the road, now I'm in my 30s, like I'm gonna kind of be in the same place. And he was able to get placed and see success with no previous sales experience. So after that, I didn't really do anything as far as like selling except doing like customer service stuff, like customer complaints and all that, but no selling experience. Either. And he talks about how he's going to be using the skill remote closing as a crucial stepping stone to make sure his future businesses are successful. Me getting into this space, if I'm making great money, I can obviously change my life financially wise, and then also investing towards you know those ventures. This is just a stepping stone towards that. All that coming up in today's episode of the Remote Closing Academy podcast. Dude, Anthony, before we jump into it, how, how's the week been so far? Oh man, it's been been pretty solid. Like I'm on a new offer and it's it's really it's a really cool offer so far and so like i'm just excited to uh really just dive into this and uh you know like do what we do here at, at rca and just be in as setters and closers you know we're making great money while we're uh impacting lives so i'm just really excited to do it amazing sure. man so let's uh we're gonna rewind the clocks as we usually do on these episodes so you know, before you were doing sales, before you were in RCA, before you were in 30 DC, just take it back as far yeah. as you want to go and tell us a little yeah. bit about uh, pre-closer Anthony. Pre-closer, okay. So uh, that's a great question. When people ask me this, like just anything where people are like, oh, tell me about yourself. You forget everything about it. So um, I like to start back in, so I live in Kansas City, Kansas right now. i uh, been here for about six years, but for that, I in California, West Coast all my life. Um, I never went the traditional path per se, like, you know, after high school, you go to college, get a degree, go like work down your degree, like whatever, get a career with your degree, essentially. I never did that. Um, I kind of job hopped just trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, um, then I moved out here to Kansas City, just wanted to start my life over at 24. And I, I ended up working at this luxury fitness facility for the for the duration of that six years, just moved my way up the company through different leadership positions. Um, also during COVID, I did some um, account managing roles um, just at home. So that kind of also helped me out a little bit with with sales closing and, and all that customer service roles. Uh, but after doing that for a while, I just, I realized some stagnation there because when I moved, when I moved to Kansas City, it was like, okay, like I'm working from the ground up and that was kind of like a, a hero's journey for me, essentially. And then finally, on my feet, you know, like able to rent a house, like I have a house right now, like I'm renting, you know, I have a roommate, but he is out there and also basically on my own. Uh, but now it's like, okay, like I need a new challenge, essentially. And um, I saw the trajectory of what, and I'm like, okay, in the six years, I haven't really moved the needle that much. And so if I look another six years down the road, now I'm in my thirties, like I'm going to kind of be in the same place. And so I was like, okay, like, let me try to find some like other opportunities and sure, sure enough, like on YouTube, I don't I'm not sure how the algorithm works or how you guys put your, your ads. I saw your face, like <laughs> all of the ads and like just started hit, like watching like a remote, remote closing video. I'm like, okay, this actually seems like legit. It's like. I've tried, what do you call, oh, what are those things called? Um, what do you call like multi-level marketing? That's what it was. I tried multi-level yeah, yeah. marketing in the past. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, like, I don't know really too much about other kind of online like businesses or anything like that besides affiliate marketing, whatever, but I wasn't trying to do any of that. But this seemed like a legitimate opportunity to learn a skill that's going to help you out like with whatever facet in your life down the road. And so I checked it out. I'm like, oh, this is actually legitimate. And so signed for third day closer, um, was diving into it a few days later. I ended up talking to Susan uh, on a, she was vetting me out. Then I talked to Jacob and I was like, okay, this, this is becoming real. Like it's getting scary, but I'm like, okay, like that fear is like that. It's cut was kind of the, um, the sign like okay i should probably do this because there's something mm -hmm. on the other side that you know if i do well at it you know i can change my life forever yeah okay 
So dude, that, there's a lot of really good stuff in there that I that I want to touch on. By the way, uh, just a side note, Susan and Jacob both had podcasts on, on here. So for those of you that are listening, make sure to go back and, and check those out. I think uh, Susan too, I do want to get her on a, another episode because she literally went, came from no experience and she, we were even just talking about her on a marketing meeting um, earlier today and she's just like, she crushes it like every week. So got to have her back on. But anyway, back to uh, Anthony here. This isn't the Susan show. <laughs> um, so let's go back. So with the, I think I missed it, but with the, um, with the fitness offer, what specifically like were you doing with them? Like were, was it, uh, was it sales or like what, what specifically were you doing there? Gotcha. So I started out at the front desk, um, just front desk, moved up to front desk, teaching like the other front desk people how to do it. Then I moved actually into like managing the housekeeping department had no experience there. Then they went into uh, maintenance and managing all the pool operations. And so that's what I was doing like right before I ended up like making the switch. And so it was all like kind of like hands-on like facilities, management, like maintenance work. Okay, got it. So the reason I ask is because I've talked to a, a few people that are in like they, they were doing like the, the fitness side or yeah, the fitness side, but they were doing like the sales. So it was like a really yeah. easy transition of like, okay, I'm doing sales here and then transition to RCA. But uh, what you were doing was almost, it had nothing to do with, with clothing or sales. So oh, what's, not um, at all. what was, have, do you have any like previous sales experience or like, you know, when you, when you were first seeing like, Hey, become a remote closer from, from some of the ads, like what was your initial thought? Like, did you want to get into sales? Like, did you have any negative like views on it? Like what was the, what was the consensus there? Yeah. So if I take it farther back than when I, I previously started at the beginning, like when I was like 18 to like 20, like I, I was on, I was trying like all these different things. And one of them was doing uh BDB sales and, um, I decided on a thing. I think the offer was Comcast. I forget. That was that was like twelve years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but like got out there and didn't really get the training on how to do it correctly. They're just like, all right, like here you go, like <laughs> go walk in business, business, try to sell this, and then yeah. that kind of just turned me off like for a while for selling. But then a few years later, I was actually working at a debt collection agency. Like it was kind of like a call center essentially. And so that was, I guess that's kind of selling. But yeah. um, through that experience, I did that for about a few months. And I'm like, okay, like this is not, I don't want to be do debt collecting. But yeah. like, at, then, so, then so after that, I didn't really do anything as far as like selling except doing like customer service stuff, um, just face to face, like, but not selling anything, just kind of handling like, um, like customer complaints and all that. But no, no selling experience outside of that. Yeah, dude. I it's funny. I've talked to a couple of people too that have been in like the debt collection space. And I think if you yeah. can like crush it there, like you have no problem jumping into like the, you know what we teach the the transformation industry. Uh because yep. you know, you're trying to sell someone that like literally has no intention of, of paying like whatever you know that you're trying to collect on so i think that's i think that's kind of funny um but so with with you having like the two negative experiences in sales right you did b2b you did the debt collection stuff you yep. know you, you don't want to continue with those what what was like the the switch for you to be like okay yeah. cool i didn't see success with these sales but like this one is going to be different what was the the shift mm -hmm. there i think the shift was like for one like I'm in my thirties now, so I'm, I'm really in my, my time and my location for a little bit more. So like one, like obviously having something remote was pretty cool, but also two, I'm not sure if you explain, you explained it in the ad, whatever, but I really shifted my mindset to say that sales is really, uh, you're really helping like the other person on the other end, connecting them with something that could potentially like be, be something that's for them. And so I'm like, oh, like. Like before, like I would think like salespeople, like just like a used car salesman or something, try to push something on. Um, but it's real, like a salesperson really just like someone who connects like a, pro a really great product or service with someone. And so I'm like, oh, by that's a really great role to be in. And so, um, you know, I think that can really impact someone's life. Like when Jacob, going back to Jacob, like I think back to my conversation with him, I'm like, Dude, I didn't feel like I was being sold. Oh, yeah, but he really did like open up like the door for me into something else. And so like, I think the mark of a great salesman is like when the person can come back, like, dude, thank you for that. And so yeah. you could potentially, whatever offer you get, you could potentially like change someone's life. 
Yeah, they, that's that's a huge a huge point. And really, even when I I look back at you know when I first started with with RCA, is you know I, I think a lot of people, especially when they first get into sales, kind of like you talked about, like they they just have like that preconceived idea of like what sales is. And you know I always use the used car salesman example, or you know when you're walking through uh when you're walking through the mall and you got the the guy or gal trying to give you like put lotion on you and then sell you the lotion. Uh, you yep. know, you, you just like, you're a lot of these, you know, door knocking too. You're just like, you're, you're exposed to a lot of these like quote unquote negative ways of, of doing sales. And then when someone says, Hey, you want to get into sales? It's just like, you're going to make decisions based on your past experiences. And if your past experiences are bad, then, you know, obviously the, the way that you move forward is going to be based on, on that. So, um, yep. you know, I think just for, for everyone that's listening to this is like, if you do have that, that negative experience, like negative experiences with sale selling, just understand that like the, what we're doing here is, is what I like to call like transformational sales. Right. And if you can, the, the sale that you're making is to help that person's life out of whatever situation it is, whether it's spiritually, financially, you know, with their relationships, uh, you know, whatever it is, right. It's like, you almost got to look at it as like, it's your obligation to sell them into it because they're not going to get out of the situation that they're in without your help. And when you can yep. transition that into your mind, I think it, it becomes way, way easier, not only to, to sell, but also just to get into the mindset. Like you're not trying to give something to someone that they don't want it. Right. Is, is you're, you're doing it to help that person. So, um, okay. So you, you see the ads and you go through that. And, and one thing that you mentioned is that you jumped into a 30 day closer, which for those of you who don't know, we do have different programs. We have more of like a quote unquote, like intro, uh, to sales, right. That's 30 day closer. And then we have a RCA. If you go into 30 DC, I think there's, you know, 100% chance that you can still see success just with that and not have to, you know, go into RCA. But what was your, I guess, what was that time frame? So you jump into 30 DC. What did you like? What was like your first couple of days in there? How did you consume the content? What did that look like? Great question. What did I jump into 30 DC? Actually, the upright. Well, it's funny. Right I had your uh, I had your win post. I think you said, "Oh no, you said you joined RCA in the 15th." So I can't, yeah. I can't see 30 DC. Yeah, 30 DC is. I mean, they hear clip on both. Oh, looks like I joined 30 DC on August 10th, and then let me go to remote closing. All right, so five days I, later, you jumped in. <laughs> yeah, so five in, days later. Yeah. So what what happened in those first five days in 30 DC? I guess is the question. I think if I remember correctly, like I just started watching like the trading modules ever and then like I got on more of the group calls in 30 DC. And I think I was gonna start I think I started practicing like one of the, the mock scripts, like whatever, just like doing the role plays that, that we do on the and then I think I got the email from Susan. I think she reached out to me about it. Like I think yeah, she reached out. She reached out to me and then like we just had a conversation. Then um a few days later I'm in RCA. So it's just like I just uh, jumped into the, like the modules right away and just trying to and it. Nice. And and yeah. why why do you think that was? Like what what was your reasoning to to upgrade? Just kind of curious, yeah. really. Well, well for sure. I think um it's good. I think for upgrade to RCA was that you have there's Extra, there's extra trainers there's extra coaching in it that's like gonna help you like you could do it on your own yes at 3dc like it's great it's still a great program but like with rca there's just a little bit extra help with someone who's like me who need, who doesn't really have sales experience background uh you know kind of giving kind of giving you that just extra extra, extra push and just extra guidance uh so much more in rca that's like really useful yeah. Yeah. I get that question a lot. Actually, there was um, someone that reached out to me via email a couple of days ago and they were like, you know, Aaron, like I've done my research and 30 DC is this, and you know, do I have to to join RCA? And the, the, the answer is no. Um, I do think that, you know, the, I, the way that I look at the main difference is, is a lot of the content is the same. Um, the, the real main difference is going to be the support, right? The support around, you know, having a one-on-one -on -one coach and then more, more importantly is just, um, well, attach to that as the accountability, right? I think uh, as humans, it, we are not as likely to do things on our own if it's out of our comfort zone. Is it's going to take more of like an accountability partner or someone to be kind of in your back end saying like, you need to do this. Here's the time frames. Hey, did you do that thing yet? Because when you're accountable to somebody else, it's it's a lot uh, it's a lot more likely that you actually stick to um, to what you say you're going to do. So. 
Okay. So you, so you jump into RCA, uh, what happens after yeah. that? You know, what, uh, how did you consume the content? Uh, you know, based on your win post, I mean, it's, yeah. you had it pretty much laid out of like, you know, you join this date, it only took you X amount of time to, you know, to start going to the content, you started self-sourcing. So I guess just give us that, that breakdown of what that timeline looked like. Yeah. For, for my timeline was right when I got in, I think, think of my introduction to it. I got a, uh, I ended up getting a coach, like Jet Jet's my coach. And so um I ended up getting hooked up with Jet. He just kind of like laid out a game plan for me. He's like, okay, like um got to know each other. He laid out a game plan for me and he's like, okay, like we're gonna do you're gonna do like this many calls, like mock calls before you know, next steps. And so just get really gave proficient at at the calls. Like then he he would review he would review my calls, um, give me feedback to pointers. Um yeah, then it, then long then like a few weeks later, he's like, okay, like we're gonna get you self sourced and you get yourself in the pipeline, and so um, that ended up, yeah, that ended up happening like thirty days later, something like that. I I can't think of it up the top of my head. Got got put in the pipeline, um, and then I didn't even get like one day of the pipeline before I got that offer, the previous offer that I was on, and so. 30 to 45 days was when from the start of RCA to like when I got my first software, like it, that's all it took. Nice. And one, one interesting thing, just, you know, hearing you explain that is it, it's more like you, you kind of like you went through it and you almost like you just made the decision that you were going to like go through the content and then sure. you made it through and then you got placed. So I guess what, was there any like, for lack of a better word, like hardships or like struggles that you went through in that process, like any like roadblocks that you, that you ran into as you were going through the content and reaching out to companies and things sure. like that. Um, I don't know about, about roadblocks. Like it was, uh, you know, I was starting to reach self source out to comp like to companies. Like I think the only roadblock was like just trying to get them to respond back after that. Like it's just, but it's, it's a numbers game, right? So like, they're not all going to, um, reach out to you. like they, they even recommended the program to you know you gotta reach out to 250 businesses or something like that and so it's like okay like i know that you know not all of them are going to reach back out i think it's just mental frame like okay everything kind of in sales is going to be numbers game so just be, be used to like you know rejections or people not following back up um but i think Personally, I think the, the reason why like, I made it work is because like, I kind of pigeonholed myself to make it work, if that makes sense. Uh, got to get a little backstory of that. So right when I got into RC, I got really, I really made it, made it a point to like, okay, like I am putting in my notice at my other place because mm. um, I'm not going to try to be like, okay, like I'm still working full-time job, but also like trying to figure out like how to do like a smoother transition is I don't on this to anyone but this is like just, this is just for me it's like okay like i gotta back myself in the core to make this work and so i just mm -hmm. found i was like okay like, i put it in my notice at my other place um and now no that it, it worked that's all i got to say it just it just ended up working <laughs> yeah well I, I think there's that's a, a great point of you know, having your back up against the wall. Cause I, I was in the same spot and I've, I've told my story a million times, so I won't, I won't bore people with the details, but yeah. uh, I was kind of like forced out of my uh, quote unquote forced, right? I had like started a, a business and you know, my company, the company I was with found out that I had the business and they gave me the ultimatum. They're like, well, you can do your own thing or you can work with us, but you can't do both. So, uh, you know, I think it was ego mixed with, I had just invested into a program where I was like, all right, I'm going to go do my own thing. And so at that point, it was like, there was no, like, hopefully this works. It was like, it needs to work and I'm going to make it work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, now that being said, you know, anyone that's listening to this, that's on like that fence as well, is I think there's two different types of people and and one isn't wrong. And, you know, I think it's just more of a personality thing. Um, but when it comes to that back up against the wall pressure, you were either, there, there's people that like make it happen and there's ones that like crumble under that pressure. Right. And, and I think that, you know, a lot of times has to come with just experience and, you know, you know, someone that has, you know, a job and a wife and kids and, you know, different obligations. Like I, I wouldn't recommend that for, for someone like yeah. that. Right. It's, it's just, you gotta, you gotta take, take the risks where, where you can. And, you know, obviously weigh the, the option between those two. 
Um, okay. so, so yeah, dude, I just want to commend you on, you know, making that jump and, and just making the decision that, that you were going to make it, make it happen, you know? Um, Thank you. so I think, um, you know, also just looking at that and just the way that you broke it down is a, a takeaway that I want people to have is, you know, in the way that you explained it is it's just such a linear process in which you see success with something like this, right? It's not, it's not like, uh, you know, Amazon FBA where, your success is predicated on if a product does well, right? Or if a TikTok blows up or whatever, right? Affiliate marketing is 100% predicated on can you generate traffic for that specific thing and then sell enough to make it make sense, right? And then you have a, competi a competition of a ton of other people. With something like remote closing or appointment setting or you know, in, in the sales space, is it's very linear, right? There's businesses, like hundreds of businesses that are actively looking for appointment setters and closers. So can you put in the work and show that you have the skill set to be hired by that company? And then B, can you reach out to enough people? Like Anthony said, it's like one of the recommendations that we give is like, don't even like question anything unless you've reached out to 200 plus companies. Now, is it going to take you 200 companies to get placed and, you know, find a company? No, it could take 10, it could take 15, it could take 20. But what we're trying to do is hedge against the fact that like, let's say the numbers say you don't get the first hundred that, that reach out to you. Right. So, so I just wanted to really lay that into a lot of people. And, and I try to like bash this into people's heads as much as possible. It's like, it's just such a linear thing that if you just reach out to enough companies and you put in enough work of practice and stuff, like you will find a company to work with. So anyway, yeah. it's that tangent there. Um, so let's talk about, um, you know, one part of your, your story is, you know, you, you got placed on the company. And that company didn't end up working, you know, working out. So I do want to touch on that because I think what I want people to understand is the first company or the second company or the fifth company that you work with, it might not be the one that you stay with for, for a long amount of time. So obviously we won't talk about specific offers and names or anything, but what, what was like that process of you joining the company? And then what made you realize that it might not be the best fit for you? And then it was time to find another offer. Oh yeah. Great. So you know, I, like you say, we're not going to specifics or anything of that stuff, but like, yeah. just to, um, if, oh, did I mean, oh, you mute yourself. Sorry. I was like, yeah, oh my, no, you're good. You're okay. Good. Okay. No. Uh, so that process was like, so I was on the off for about a week and a half and, um, like I realized like quickly just, you know, I was in a, I'm in a setting role and you're only going to, I was at a setting role. You're only going to be making money if the closes go through. That was, kind of just seeing like how many closes were going through and it just wasn't going to hit the income like goals that I like set out to like starting this. Uh, and so um, I was like, okay, like this just, I, it's just not going to work out for me. Just, just on income goals a lot. Like I love the offer. Like I love what they're doing. Uh, but you know, if you, there is potential to make great money be like a remote, a remote setter, a remote closer. Uh, you know, as you see, like on the RCA, uh, videos on like from Aaron's podcast, like there's people making just great money doing this. And I just was not going to see those numbers anywhere. And so, um, uh, ended up networking through the RCA, uh, community and sure enough, someone who I ended up like just becoming pretty acquainted with. She told me about the offer she was on. She hooked me up with the recruiter. Um, and then. Later, I'm on this new offer, um, and this offer is actually really, really sweet. And so, I'm just really excited to to dive in. Yeah, dude. One one thing, uh, just about the networking is we were talking about it before before we started recording. But I just think yep. like it, you know, it doesn't matter what what course you jump into. I've you know in my own time, right, have have invested into other courses and programs and stuff to you know, learn how to invest my money properly and, and things like that. And, you know, even in, in some of those offers is like, I, yeah, like, you know, the price of the program, whatever, but it's like, I feel like just being a part of some of these communities and being connected with the right people is like, that is what to me is worth the investment into these programs, right? Meeting new people yes. and, and networking and networking with these people, because you just never know, like what conversation lead, like you knowing one person could then lead you to your next breakthrough of, of whatever it is. Right. There's, there's so many people, yep. for example, that I've talked to that have been on this podcast where, you know, internally for RCA, we're looking for closers or setters, whatever. And it's like, I have genuine connections with people that I have on this podcast. And I'm like, Hey, 
this person could be a good fit. And then, you know, whether it works out or not, they, you know, because we have this connection and we're networking here, they then get placed into an offer that changes their life, you know? So you just never know, um, you know, who you can meet, especially in the RCA community when, you know, if someone gets placed in an offer and you're connected with that person, guess who that person is going to think of when the CEO is like, Hey, we need another closer or need, need another setter. You're going to be the person that is, uh, you know, in that, in, you know, in, in the first thing that the, the first person that they think about. Um, yep. so one thing I want to just ask you, you know, in hindsight with that offer, right. The one that, that didn't work out would you, in hindsight, you know, hindsight's 2020, is there anything sure. that you maybe would have clarified or asked the recruiters in that company before sure. you, you jumped on with them? Yeah. I would have tried to clarify, uh, like what, like, Cause like what, what the average setter is making, like what, like the, like their top, their top person's making and kind of yeah. like say like, okay, like, let me see like what they're doing. Like, let me listen to their calls, like how they're doing it and all that. Um, I would have clarified more. I think I was just really excited. Like, oh, I'm on an offer now. <laughs> and yeah. so, but it, it also like, also the, the offer like lined up with like just a lot of um, value. It's so, like, I think just the combination of this team, like, oh, like this is meant to be like, let me just try it out. And then. But, you know, you can't always put those things with like rose colored glasses. Uh, no, yeah. but you never, but like you said, hindsight's 2020, you never know until like you're in it and you're going down. I'm like, okay, like this, you know, it's all, it's just a learning experience. There's nothing like bad about it. It's just like I, I learned it when I learned it there and I'm taking it, taking it here. Yeah. And it's better, it's better to do it that way, right? You, you have both sides yeah. of the spectrum. You have the person that's, you know, they're on the sidelines and they're waiting for the perfect opportunity. And you know, that, that sure. perfect opportunity never comes, right. You were kind of just like, Hey, this opportunity is here. Let's say yes. Let's, you know, go after it. And then, you know, as cliche as it sounds, right. It's you win or you learn, right. You, you win and it's the great, the great opportunity or because you might not have made the best decision, right. Is, is you learn from that. And now, you know, okay, this next offer, I'm sure you ask that very question to, you know, to the, to the company that you're, you're working with now. So um, one point that I do want to just hammer in for, for people listening to is, you know, I think like, like Anthony said, and you basically said what I was going to say is a lot of times when, especially when you jump into a program and, you know, you want to make money and, and you're just trying to find that offer. And then as immediately when someone's like, Hey, I have an offer, you like jump onto it. But I, I want you guys to think about it in a way of like, this is a two way relationship, right? You want to like, be able to present yourself as like you are a business and they're a business. So you yep. have the opportunity to like talk to these companies and ask them questions, right? A lot of times these companies will want you to ask the questions and be proactive of, you know, <laughs> you being in charge of your finances and your goals and things like that, because it's just, it's going to showcase that you are like really into this, right? As opposed to someone that's just like, all right, cool. I don't care. I'm on the offer. Let's go. Give me some calls. Right. It's just a, a little <laughs> bit of a different, um, you know, dynamic off the bat. So, um, so dude, you're on, on this new offer, um, and you found them through, through the community. So, uh, as we're sure. recording this, we're on the 9th of, uh, October and it's your first mm-hmm. day. So what are you, yeah. like, what is the plans for you? Like, how, how are you jumping fully into it? Um, sure. just give them some, give us some feedback there. Yeah, so first day, you know, they're having me uh, just going through like all the trainings right now. Uh, it's pretty, you know, pretty standard. Just going through all, all the trainings, just getting all the text, or you know, the CRM processes, and just now I'm listening to uh, just their setter, like other setter calls that have that are obviously winning calls. You want to like with any any of these things, like you want to listen to like the, the better calls, so you can kind of like okay, like how are they doing it? You know, kind of just absorbing. You know, or then I think after listening to a few of those, I'll start practicing and then maybe like later to be on the phones. And so I was just, you know, getting straight into it. Like, and I know I'm not going to be perfect right off the bat, but you know, the best way to, you know, get better is to actually do it. And so that's how, that's how the first day is going. Sweet. What would you, yep. you know, give to someone as a recommendation, you know, as you were, uh, cause we didn't really touch on this. So to so go back to this a little bit is yep. when you were doing your initial like self-sourcing and reaching out to companies, what were you finding yep. was like your best, um, I guess, avenue of, uh, you know, where were you finding the most of these people sure. to reach out to and and what was like your process? Like what message were you sending out? Like just maybe talk a little bit on on that to give some actionable steps. Oh, it's actually it's actually kind of crazy. So um, when you're going through uh, the art, like RSA program, like you, 
trained, you get um, a full list of just like Facebook groups. And of going all like I put myself in a bunch of the Facebook groups of just like inbound, like high set, it, like like high ticket closing and all that and stuff. There's a bunch of you know opportunities out there if you get if you plug yourself into those groups. Um, and so just doing that, and you quickly like see like which opportunities are like are legit and which ones aren't in there. And so uh, just any legit ones that seem like they would be pretty good, I would just like. A lot of them, they would just have like a Facebook post and be like, "Hey, like we're, like we're hiring for like set or whatever." Like comment, like if you're interested, and they'll send you like a DM. The next steps. So that was one. Another another way I was doing it is like I would follow some of these companies on Instagram, and I'm not sure how the algorithm works and all that, but um, I would like another company that. Other companies I'll be selling to them, I will get their ads, and so I'm like, oh, this is something similar. Let me like DM, like DM them or email them, and just see like if they're looking for, you know, like they're looking for closers or anything like that. And so, yeah. um, like I was with the Instagram thing, it was kind of funny. Like it was that one wasn't really that proactive. They were kind, of, it was just kind of just feeding me like similar things, just based on like what I was looking up. If that makes sense, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. pro- Pro tip, <laughs> at least at least on Instagram. Yeah, so. dude, I, that works on. From what I've seen, uh, you know, that works on on most platforms. Like even, you know, especially on Facebook, right? Like when you let's say you interact with an ad, right, and yep. then, then going to get served like all the ads, and then also related ads to that. So it's just, yeah, it, it's a pretty cool way to like you know, quote unquote, hack the uh, the algorithm to give you what you want based on like what you're you know what you're engaging with. And the other thing too, you know, back to that, it's like. You know, if you're trying to find a business owner to reach out to is you go to the business owner and then you just figure out, okay, who are they following? Who are they interacting with? A lot of times, like yep. they're in the same networks and they're in the same groups. Um, I'm curious actually, cause you were talking about the, the Facebook, uh, the Facebook group thing. And yep. I've been getting a lot of people that have reached out to me about like some of these groups and how they're like, almost like, uh, like, like fake companies that are trying to like recruit did you did you see that at all in terms of like when you say fake fake companies like like kind of uh they were like fake, disguised like, as like rec- they're like disguised as like recruiting companies so they're basically like yeah. hey we're we're looking for a closer and then you like talk to them and then they're like hey you have to pay me like this amount for me to play like have oh, yeah. you, you run into that yeah yeah I, I ran into a few of those yeah um and i think you kind of sniff it out quickly, just like, you know, fill the application, but then you, you feel like you're like in a sales funnel, like when you, yeah. So like, yeah. Then like you kind of talk to them and then some of them actually kind of funny enough, like they start like using kind of like the same scripts that, you know, we learn like in RCA. Yeah. And so I'm like, I, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm probably getting bet, like, like vetted out right now. And so, <laughs> but let, like, but then I was like, okay, let me, let me just, uh, let me play along with them. And then I'm like, okay, like they're trying to, like they're trying yeah. to pay me to do further like, coaching and then they'll place. And so, yeah, there's, there's quite a few of those for sure. Yeah, dude, that's, it's funny or not funny. That's not the right word, but it's like, I, I'm, I'm thinking about doing almost like, do you know, have you heard of CoffeeZilla? Like, you know, that channel. Mm-hmm. So he's like kind of exposed. Yeah. like stuff. I want to, um, I want to do a video that's like almost similar to that. Yeah. Where I expose like some of those, those people that are doing that. Cause I think it's, it's like a, it's like the worst bait and switch. Right. It's like, Hey, you, we are looking for these closers and it's like, it's rampant. I feel like, you know, I I was doing just a little bit of of research and I just searched up, you know, one of the, um, I think the reason that a lot of people have been telling me about this is because I have multiple videos that teach that as like a a strategy, like go to Facebook groups and find, but there's like, these groups are like, this one has 40,000 members. This has 20,000, this has 30,000. So like, I know people are getting like, they're just getting slammed with these bait and switches. And I just think it's kind of, it's kind of shady. You know what I mean? So I want to like, yeah, oh, for sure. I, yeah. I want to almost like, um, yeah, this is like a side tangent, but I want to almost like be like undercover and like get on some of these calls and just like record the calls and be like, yo, like, why are you scamming? People? I don't know. In my head, it sounds pretty, pretty funny to to do and just, you know, kill two birds, one stone, make some good content and, and help people out in the process. Um, okay, yeah. cool. So, so outside of, uh, my, you know, my side tangent, um, I guess the last, you know, one of the last questions here, you know, what are some of your goals? Uh, you know, have you written them down? Like, where do you want to be in the next, you know, in the, let's say in the next six months or so, 
um, sure. in terms of the, the gigs. For sure. So I think the big, big overall picture for me, like even jumping into something like this, um, uh, is I, I do see myself as a business owner, like way down the road. Um, and, uh, more specifically, I want to open up a personal development center like for men, essentially. Uh, but you know, I think everything that I'm going to be learning, like what's like with sales is like a sales and entrepreneurship or go hand in hand. And so, uh, I think, you know, me getting into this space, doesn't matter like what offer I'm, I'm if I'm making great money, I can, you know, obviously change my life, like financially wise, and then also investing towards, you know, those ventures and also freeing up my time. And so, you know, this is, I'm just a stepping stone towards that. But in the next like, six months, you know, I do have a, a goal of making like 25K a month. And so, um, like, I think at first, I, when I first like start, started seeing like our savior, just like oh, people doing that. But then like, you, whatever offer you're on, like, oh, this is actually tangible. Like, like, like if you, um, break down, like how many sets or closes that you can get like it's it's definitely possible and so like i think six months from now i want to be making that 25k mark nice yeah yep. uh, just based on what you said like the last thing there is i think it's really important for people to to get right i think you know when we start throwing out these numbers you know like 10 20 30 thousand dollars a month like when when people outside looking in let's say there's this is like their first video learning about remote closing is yep. you know immediately they're like there's no way that's possible right like how does that even work but what you just said was you know when you're breaking down the numbers and and just reverse engineering this is how many sales that i'll need to be making this is how many calls i need to take every single day you know weekly monthly basis and when you break it down in that way it starts to become a lot more uh realistic right it starts to become more tangible and at the yep. end of the day like doesn't matter if you're a closer or you're a business owner or starting your own thing is if you just reverse engineer, like what is the minimum activities I need to do on a you know daily, weekly, monthly basis to where your end goal becomes inevitable. And it becomes more sure. of a math problem than like, a, well, I hope I make X amount of money this month, you know? So I think that's, yeah. a, that's a really great way of, of putting it. Um, so dude, I think that's, I pretty much the the bulk of it. I think you're you're in a really good spot and and it's it's good to see that you have the goals written out cuz you know, I think a lot of people just go through life living day by day and they just hope yep. that their life is going to change and you know, you're obviously taking the the steps to uh you know to better that. So, I'm going to do an outro really quickly. We're going to uh I'm going to give you some time just think I want you to think about like your biggest like takeaway, biggest like tip or trick that you would give to someone that's listening to this that they can take away and like go out and, and implement. So just, or maybe a mindset change, just think about something that you want people to take away from, uh, from this episode. And, uh, I'll, I'll do this outro here really quickly. So, uh, for those of you that are watching up to this point, um, obviously you're, I mean, you've watched, we're at this point, like 40 minutes into it. So there's a good chance that you are at least a, a little bit more open of learning what remote closing is. So for those of you are at this point, whether you're on the YouTube channel or in the podcast app down in the description be uh, below or the podcast app, it's the show notes. Um, the first link in there is going to be a, a free webinar masterclass that I put together. It goes over the four steps of exactly how to get started with remote closing. Um, and those four steps, you can literally watch the video and take some notes and leave away from that and implement some of the stuff that we talk about in that. Um, or full transparency towards the end of that video is I do give an option to be like, Hey, if you want some more help, if you want, you know, for us to hold your hand through the process, um, obviously we can talk about what that looks like, but, um, either way, like I said, I, I spent a lot of time in that video, um, really just giving the step-by-step -step of, of using that. And if you want to, you know, watch the video and, and take some notes and just be done with it after that, cool. Or we can, uh, obviously what it, you know, talk about what it looks like to uh, work a little bit further. So that being said, first link down in the description below, Anthony, what you got for the beautiful people today? think all I have is, you know, like whatever, you, you know, like how, how cliche it is like, you know, whatever you put your mind into, you know, like you can definitely make things work for sure. You know, like, you know, if you get into this program at all, like it, like whatever you put in, you're going to get out. Um, and you know, you never, you never know, like what you don't, you don't know what you don't know, essentially. So like, if you're on the fence about start like about on the fence about, you know, jumping into RCA, uh, you know, I would say just Go like going with the open mind because there is there is a lot of great opportunities out here that you just don't know about like as of right now um but you know yeah that's all i got <laughs> i don't know if that was good order. no no dude that i think that's good i think that'll the what i always go to is like whatever the message is there's always going to be someone that can take something out of it and it's going to hit someone right in the right at the right time and, and get them to take action. So, um, Anthony, dude, thank you so much for, for hanging out with us 
with us for, you know, the hour here, especially on your, your first day of the new setter job, I wish you nothing but luck. And what I've been telling everyone is I, I need to start getting some, uh, some follow-up episodes with people that we've been, you know, talking to over the last couple of months. So I would love to, wow. to reconnect in the next six months or so and see where you are, whether you're on the same offer, crushing it, different offer, whatever it is. I think, um, you know, you have, like I said earlier, I think you have some pretty awesome goals and I, I think you're going to do what you need to, to hit that point. So those of you that are hanging out, thanks so much for watching. Uh, again, first link down in the description. If you want to check out that masterclass with the four steps, that being said, we'll see you guys, Aaron here from the remote closing Academy podcast. So you guys the next one. Talk soon. Peace.